I know in this society we live, I can't adapt And if I made it once, I know that I can make it back What's opinions or a fact? I've been climbing Now what they call procrastination, I see perfect timing And coming where we from, no, not the city, but the bottom No hope in resolutions when you know you was the problem I told Dre, it ain't like I'm really done with lectures So I done what's best for me You ain't a failure for investing in your dreams and when that day should come i earned it all relentlessly what's good y'all welcome to another episode of the mentee channel uh i'm your host gerald g uh whichever one you want to call me people have met me by so different titles these days so i want to make sure it's cleared up <laughs> and so uh just overall man um i got a dynamic guest here with me is a brother that is on a mission uh, and has a vision of financial freedom and just want to teach his people about financial literacy all around. Uh, no other than the dynamic brother, Mr. Ethan Foss. <laughs> Good stuff, man. How you doing, big guy? Hey, man, doing well, doing well. How about yourself? Oh, man, listen, ain't no complaints on this end, man. We're grateful, brother. We're grateful. Hey man, definitely, and I'm definitely grateful to have you on. And so I appreciate appreciate you uh, coming aboard and uh, definitely just sharing with your platform, uh, Prevail Nation, and you know, and what you're doing over there, man, it's awesome. So you know, just kind of expand on that. Like, how did you come up to the idea, and you know, just what you all are about? Absolutely, absolutely. So first and foremost, man, appreciate you, and um, certainly salute you and uh, what you're doing in the community, man, and. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's, it's what it's all about. It's all about empowerment and uh, being able to lift up, you know, our, our, our community and our fellow man and, you know, leave things better off. But uh, just to just to give you somewhat of a point of reference, of course, um, you know, the, the financial service industry is uh, certainly, uh, you know, an industry that is, uh, you know, sort of on the cutting edge and on the move. But uh, like most people, man, I was taught to, you know, the, the whole go to school, get good grades, get a good job and that that was going to pretty much be the, you know, the happily ever after, uh, you know, to things. And, uh, you know, we pursued that. I was uh, was working with a company, uh, Lowe's Home Improvement at the time uh, as a as a um, as a cashier and then ultimately moved up to a flooring specialist, et cetera. And, uh, you know, as as I say, I was, you know, seeking to sort of climb the, the ladder uh, uh, only to find out that that ladder was sort of leaning up against the wrong building. You know, and, and just like uh, in those situations where you the closer you get to something that you thought you wanted and you begin to see, you know, people working all these all these crazy hours and, uh, you know, not seeing their family and having relational problems and, you know, uh, health challenges based off the number of hours. And you quickly say, hey, look, you know what, this this ain't this ain't what I want, <laughs> you know. And so, uh, you know, eventually was, you know, sort of let go from. Uh, let go from that company. And, and I quickly came to the realization, and I'm grateful that I did, that linear income, sort of trading time for dollars, uh, was never going to basically be able to provide me the level of freedom and wealth and abundance that I truly desire and believe that is ours by divine right, you know. Uh, and so uh, at, at that time, I was searching, you know, um, and, and so the company uh, you know, that we are uh, in partnership with in terms of the platform Primerica was presented to me actually prior to that, I think two additional times uh, prior to actually, you know, getting involved with it. And um, and so, man, I, I say, you know, opportunity doesn't always keep coming to us. You know, sometimes they come and, and it goes away and it's gone forever. So I'm grateful that, you know, the, that the father saw fit for it to come back a third time because everybody's not so fortunate, <laughs> you know, to get a third shot at something. Right. Um, and so in terms of, you know, the whole prevail, uh, you know, piece of things, it was I was actually at a uh, before I actually got started with the company uh, was, you know, at Boost Mobile. This was way back, man, in probably oh nine when you could actually select your number. <laughs> it just goes to show you how long ago <laughs> it was. Yeah. Right. You literally could pick the number that you wanted. And so as I selected the number that I actually have. Uh, I knew that I was going to be in a business. I knew that God was going to lead me in a business, but I didn't know exactly what. And so uh, I literally was in a in the booth store and there was a, a sign sort of on the other side of the register that said, don't just settle, prevail. 
Mm. And that thing, man, just that thing just sort of resonated with me. Uh, uh, Gerald, just don't just settle, prevail. And I knew, man, I knew in, in immediately, you know, that that was that that was it, man. And it, and it was and it's sort of indicative of being able to go through adversity, being able to go through an enormous amount of adversity uh, and have a thick skin to continue to see the mission all the way to completion. So that's a little bit, little, just a little bit uh, <laughs> in terms of how that, you know, sort of, sort of, sort of manifested. Man, that's an awesome story though. You, cause you never know where you can get a spark from or where you can get an inspiration. And right. so you find that in the place where for one, you're selecting the, the phone number that's going to be your destiny. And plus they, they oftentimes speak about how numbers have an uh, influence influence on you know your life path and mm-hmm. you know, your journey and the importance of just numbers in general and by you basically being in that place and in the right time um looking up and just having to see that sign and then now it's creating what it's creating and that's 2009 like yeah. I, I was in school in 2009 <laughs> so i wasn't even in I was thinking about entrepreneurship, but I my right. it was really on like so many other different avenues. It definitely wasn't even on financial literacy. So for you to be on this journey for 14, 15 years now, like yeah, man, like that's that's uh, amazing. And for it to spark something in you, and you remember it vividly, just as if it was yesterday, and to know where it came from like that, like that's. That's awesome. Like that's, yeah, appreciate that's it, man. Really dynamic. And now you're impacting people's lives and truly prevailing and being able to Im- impact people in a in a way that most people really don't don't even understand how they need that service. Right. Um, you know, I was part of my journey was life insurance and doing it, and I I had gotten out of it just for the perspective of some people didn't value it the way that I felt like they should have. Mm. But I had to also realize I couldn't put myself into it because I also had to allow them to find those choices and make those choices for themselves. But for right. you to not give up and stay on it for so long, like that's amazing. And for you to have this opportunity three times around and knew that this was something for you, like, man, like, <laughs> hey, yes, it's, it's divine, bro. It's, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly uh, it's certainly divine, man. Um, you know, and it's it's interesting because Gerald, when I really think back to being super super young, you know, in my you know in my growing up and things like that, there always was three uh, things that was sort of always on my heart at a young age, and and it, I, I, it's, I almost feel like it was just destiny, man, that that the, that the, that the good Lord just encoded it sort of in my in my in my in my DNA, man. I knew that I wanted to be. I wanted to be a godly man. I knew I wanted to be a man of principle, a biblical based man, a kingdom man. Um, I knew that. I knew that I wanted to be. That's who I wanted to be. That's that's who, uh, you know, that's who I'm called to be. I knew that. So I knew that very, very young, man. I wanted to be a kingdom man. I knew I wanted to be a family man. I wanted to be married with children, you know, not just, you know, just sort of out here doing the deal, <laughs> you know, but I wanted to, I, I wanted to, you know, uh, one woman, a wife, you know, and children that I could rear and love and cover and care for. And the third one is I knew that I wanted to be wealthy, man. I knew that, you know, abundance and, uh, you know, was my birthright, that it was it was, it was ordained for me to be, uh, you know, to be a man of means, a man of abundance, a man of surplus. And so it's just amazing as as life sort of, you know, sort of unraveled and unfolded, if you will. Um, it's amazing how a lot of times you just simply don't know what what the, the that internal compass um, that even though life adversities come and there's been many, there's been different challenges and adversities and things that have manifested themselves over this, over my journey. Um, but I just, because of those internal, you know, um, because of those internal things, I knew that I just, this, Hey, you know, I got, I got to keep persisting. I got to keep persevering. Okay. This is not playing out like I had intended to. It's almost like that song or like uh, Les Brown often says, if, 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 if it's not over until you win. So if you're not winning, it just means the story, your story isn't ended. Mm. Talk that, talk that. Cause yeah, man, Les Brown is, 
a dynamic brother. And so for yeah. you to be able to be be impacted through all of this different trials and tribulations and for you to understand what you want at an early age mm-hmm. and go for it and like fully become that man, like that's I mean that's that's really that's that's exactly what the goal is, you know? Yeah. Um to really have it from head to hand, basically. Right. And, right. You know, and fully prevail. And so like what would you say you see for your company overall? And actually, what what is mentorship? Would you say has done in your life, man? What is what does mentorship mean to you? Mm. Man, mentorship and my humble, humble opinion, brother, is it's uh it's almost it's a, it's a lifeline. You know, one of the the things and analogies that's always used is if you're on a plane and if there's some and you know, if you're experiencing some uh, turbulence or some type of you know something that requires you know, those masks to come down. You know, one of the key things is the suggest the suggestion is that you need to put your mask on if there's other people beside you. Because if you look to grab and help someone else without helping yourself, you're no good for them either. Because you're just simply not you're not even gonna be there to care for them. All right. And in my humble opinion, man, um mentorship is just that very thing. Mm. It's like oxygen. You know, you know, having the right type of mentor mentors around you and or not having the right mentors around you at the pivotal moments that that literally are life altering decision type moments. It's life and death, you know, just like oxygen, you know, if you, uh, stop breathing for an extended period of time, you know, and see what what actually happens to your to your, your to your body, man, to your temple. So mentorship, brother, I would not be who I am and where I'm at if it wasn't for you know, uh, key mentors in my life, man, the, the Dr. Walter Boston Jr., you know, uh, 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 Coach Eddie Sheffield, you know, uh, my dad, you know, different ones, man, at uh, Ezell Park, the different people that I could, you know, just just call out, man, just throughout my life that if it weren't for them, uh, Gerald, it would be no Ethan Boss. I, I wouldn't even be here in front of you, brother. I would not. Mm. I would not. So I think mentorship, man, is is it, it is absolutely everything, brother. Because if you you have the wrong type of people in, in destiny moments and in, in areas where you know you have a wrong voice that speaks something out of season, man, it'll derail your whole situation. Not just you, but it impacts your lineage. It impacts people around you. So, Gerald, it's everything, brother. Everything. Mm. And that's powerful. That's powerful because you know, of course, this is the mentee channel. Absolutely. And, um, so, you know, I feel like that's a highly important as far as mentorship and just seeing how it, you can be able to learn from someone who also at one point felt they needed to learn from someone, somebody else and how the importance of mentorship is in mm-hmm. so many people's lives. And I feel like it's like a, a hidden gem, but it's literally like right there in your face because for the most part when you're young you keep telling every everyone's trying to tell you what to do or tell mm-hmm. you how to do things or tell you about the things they went through and sometimes you might just overlook them or, or like just push them away but truthfully like the biggest battle is between some of the elders and the youth and i feel like mm-hmm. you gotta get that connect right there because Have to, once the youth realizes, man, we really need the elders. We really need the the mentorship, the leadership, the guidance, and like we really got to take heed to what they're saying yeah. because we need the knowledge that y'all already have. You know what I'm saying? Like we need those that came before us because oh, without them, it wouldn't be us. And that is that is so so true, man. I was just sitting there thinking, you know, I, I can't think of how that phrase go in its entirety, but you know, being able to stand on the shoulders of giants or something to that degree. In other words, you know, you're standing on the, you know, uh, what others have actually gone before you. Because at the end of the day, if you think about it, uh, Gerald, I've heard it said that experience is the teacher of fools, right? So think about it, man. I have someone that's been in an industry or been doing life a lot longer than you and I. So let's say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 42. So I have someone that's been you know, 60, you know, 50, 60, 70 years of age. And they've walked this thing out called life before me. And they're taking the liberty to sit down and tell me or give me their life experience or give me their level of expertise. 30, 40 years of that in a 
20 to 30 minute conversation or hour. If I don't value and understand the moment, I could literally miss something that could allow me to avoid an enormous pitfall in my life. <laughs> but, but if I actually act like I know and I'm not willing to be coachable, I'm not willing to be humble, because really the operative word, Gerald, is this. When you're humble, you can learn from anybody and anything. Mm. I don't care how old they are or young they are, because I think the true test of humility is, can I take a uh, correction from a, a three or four year old, my child? Can I take it from someone that's a lot younger than me? And in my humble opinion, that's the true test of your ability to truly be a mentee is can you be taught from things that you feel are inferior than yourself? Mm. Talk that. Talk that, man. Speak that. Speak that. And so, like, when did you realize that you you had have you always been that way or when did you realize like I got to be I I need I need more I need to be more humble or I need to be more coachable or just however you your perception of it you know it's um I, I can say it I can say it from a, a perspective of uh you know just growing up through life experiences and things like that uh you know even when it comes to parenting and you know how I was reared you know, I was blessed to grow up in, you know, in, a, uh, in an environment with uh, with my dad and with my mother, a close relationship with my dad, obviously a great relationship with my mom. But being able to be in a situation where I have that affirmation, I've had that affirmation from a from a from a masculine perspective that has affirmed me into who I am today. Right. You know, I affirm you, you know, you are a man and things of that nature. But I think having that type of connection with my dad of understanding authority. Cause one of the issues is people don't understand authority today, uh, Gerald, they really rebel against authority because they have not known authority. So it's almost like authority is an unknown factor. It's a variable, an unknown variable, like in the algebra, uh, algebraic expression, like X, <laughs> like solving for X, solving for X is like authority for most people. They don't know what the heck it is. Like what the heck is X? It's authority, you know, it's, it's discipline. So I've been blessed to have a natural situation where I've learned authority and headship from my, you know, through my dad. And then I was blessed to be around a community of people that have always sort of been a lot older than myself. So I've always had this connection. I've always sort of been the youngest person in a circle where I was blessed to be able to sort of drink from the wealth of men that were almost double and triple my age. Mm. And uh, and then so as I got older through life experiences, I thank God I had that sort of natural constitution of that. I, I knew it, that I didn't know it all. And that's one thing, you know, my dad always sort of instilled in me, man, never be uh, in a situation. So I have developed a love for learning and a love for reading and personal growth and development. All that just simply says is, hey, I acknowledge that I don't know. And so therefore, if I acknowledge that I don't know, then I need to know, which which requires you to say, hey, you know. Uh, you know, then everybody can become your teacher then. You right. know, if, if I see it that way, I can learn from anybody, man. I can learn from anything that somebody can always teach you something. And once we approach life that way, and I'm not arrived, I haven't, I'm never attaining to a, a realm, Gerald, when I'm outside of the ability to learn and grow. Once I basically become a lifelong learner, then man, it just, you know, it's, it's almost like love the learning, like love it, love the process of, of being enchanted by the fact that I just don't know something. And it gives me the ability to constantly just continue to, to, to learn and grow. Um, so that's sort of the posture that I've taken, man, over the years, man, even from, you know, when you're, you know, you're a family man, Mary, you know, what, what things that I can learn from, from my spouse, you know, because there are people that can see, and that's another piece to, to mentorship here is that a mentor can see your blind spot. Your mentor can see what you can't see, right? Or, or your red flag partner, we call this in our, in our business world, you know, having a red flag partner, somebody that can come alongside you, you know, that can see your blind spot, that can see what you can't see. Because as they say, it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. Mm, talk that. Talk that, man. And like that kind of goes to, for one, you spoke on two things that are big to me, right, mm -hmm. is... The man who knows nothing knows that the man who knows something knows that he knows nothing at all. That's my favorite Erica Badu line. Favorite, I love that. <laughs> line. favorite line. 
Like, cause that, like to me, frames a lot because I feel like even as much as you learn, you still yeah. have way more to learn, and oh, it just yeah. never ends. And no matter how much schooling you got or knowledge you 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 obtain, or degrees, diploma, what it doesn't matter. You're still you you signed up to do life today. Mm-hmm. You woke up this morning. You. Yeah. Need you're trying to learn something. It's, it's all fun and games, but you got to be learning something. You got to be putting that work in and learning something. Yes, and so you that's that's one main thing that you spoke on. And then basically removing yourself from your situation and taking a, a bird's eye view look at it. Uh-huh. And then that's, that's big, but also having people that you can humbly enough say, I'm going to go to you and tell you my problem. I'm willing to be vulnerable. Yeah. Tell you what I'm going through. And I think we, I think us as men don't do that enough. Um, I know growing up, that was hard for, for a lot of us. I know it was hard for me, Yeah, um, it's the, but it was something that I had to grow into being like, man, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. Like, can you, can you help me? Or, you know, can you put some wisdom to it? Because, it's people that's going through things right now that have no idea of who to turn to. That's so true, man. It's so true. You know, I, I think a lot of it, it, it really requires, it really requires, it requires true affirmation as a, as a man um, and as a, as, well, male, <laughs> but as a man, it truly requires you to really not have um, a low level of self image or low self esteem. Mm-hmm. To be able to admit that I don't know, that I need someone outside of myself or to even to submit myself to someone. Um, I, I won't say as my superior, but as someone that I am accountable to. Right. Because as people, we have to have it. You know, a man that's not submitted to anybody, man, is is a is a dangerous man. Right. Even in a marriage, if you have if there's a husband or spouse and he's not submitted to somebody else. When it comes to headship or covering or authority, you know, um, you know, it, it, then you have a dangerous man. And I, I think that's something I'm man, I'm just so grateful, uh, Gerald, as I look over my life, man. And I think about different challenges and adversities that I've encountered that I've had people, brother, that have that. I mean, again, I can think of a, a, a gentleman, Dr. Walter Boston, Jr., man, this brother has, has just been a. <laughs> Man, this brother has walked with me through some very pivotal areas of my life, brother, when my world was crumbling mm. and I was able to call him up, man. And, and he was, at, you know, there was never a time, man, that I didn't, that if I did not need him, he wasn't present. You know, or was if it was for lunch or if it was for, you know, a very, very, you know, challenging situation. Hey, doc, I just need to, I need to sit down with you, doc, the, the, you know, and for his accountability. And uh, man, like you said, it's, a lot of people can't really say that. Um, perhaps it's pride. Perhaps it's you know the the need to know or feeling like you have to know. But uh, I think a true test of a, a true man in terms of a level of humility, humility is his ability, man, to sit at the feet of another brother. Because you know this says there's three different relationships, Gerald. There's relationships where we see eye to eye. We're peers in a sense. Where we have a mutuality. There's relationships that I must pull a person up, right? So there's that that level of we see eye to eye with peers, so we're here. Then there's relationships of those number two that I pull up. They need me, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm I I pull them up because I'm at a maybe at a little higher footing than they are. Doesn't make me better, but I've learned a few things to put me a footing a little bit higher than theirs, so I'm able to pull them up to encourage them. Right. And then I need somebody number three that can pull me up to a higher level. And if we really think about true relationship, we have to have those three levels of relationship, Gerald. It can't be all I see, we see eye to eye, and I don't have anybody that I'm pouring into, mm. right? Because just like when it comes to a, the Dead Sea, the Dead Sea doesn't have an outlay. It doesn't have an ability for water to go out. Therefore, it's, it's stagnant water. But if we know an ocean or river is constantly moving. So I then have to have somebody that can pull me up, that can hold me accountable, that constantly allows me to learn and grow. And when I have those three levels of relationship, brother, I really believe that's when we can find true fulfillment in a sense of ourselves, that we're able to give, we're able to receive, and we're able to also be held accountable to a higher level. 
you, hey, you a wise brother, man. You dropping some gems <laughs> on here, man. Dropping straight. Hey, man. <laughs> it's grateful, but I learned I learned a few things, brother. I fell in a couple holes, brother. Just just learned a little bit through the journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you can tell that you can tell, and it's, I mean, and it's, it's, I'm grateful for you to be able to come here and, you know, drop these gems and share your knowledge. Brother, brother. Brother. Likewise, man. man. I appreciate you too. Hey, man. Hey, like, you're truthfully, you're the one dropping the gems, man. You, I'm, I'm nothing but gratitude, man, because, like, truthfully, you didn't have to do this, man, because you dropped gems on the regular. And people, if they was around you, they would already be receiving this. And so for you to be able to bring this to more people and more value, man, and have a, a, a high level, high energy conversation, mm-hmm. like in in front of more more people, mass people, they gotta they gotta learn from you and get this game from you. Um, you know, how can they do that? What's the vision for for Prevail Nation? Like how can they be a part of the nation? You know, it's it's uh Man, you know, prevail is it's interesting because it's it's a I guess one uh so let's let's say it like it's a mosaic. Uh, you know, when you look at you know uh um, a mosaic, uh, it's it's really uh you know small pieces of glass, different colorful pieces of glass, and 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 and, and collectively they they put, they paint a picture that you're able to see. Um, you know, so almost it's syn- synergistically or whatever. So, um, I guess one of the one of the key elements is. You know, it's it's a business platform. You know that that we're blessed to, uh, you know, to, to be growing uh, in terms of growing a, a business, growing a, a movement, an organization, an organism of of people. You know, uh, that desire to rescue their community, brother. Um, I, I find you know, Maya Angelou has a, a a quote that I've adopted lately to be somewhat of our mantra is that when we know better, we can do better. And I think the the embodiment of prevail is is we want to teach and raise self image. We want to develop entrepreneurship, and thirdly, we want to promote ownership. When we think about those three elements, self image is one of the factors that allows us to see ourselves a certain way. You know, Carter G. Woodson, uh, the Miseducation of the Negro, has a book. It's what's the name of the book. And he says that if a person sees themselves as inferior, you don't even have to tell them to go sit in a the corner. They'll go automatically. Mm. So I think it's imperative, man, that in this platform, if you will, or this this organization, this organism, is we want to help people to elevate their self-image. Because if you and I see ourselves as the kings and queens that we are, certain things we're not going to accept anymore, uh, Gerald. We're not going to accept certain things. We're not going to accept uh, 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 poverty or lack of scarcity. We're not going to accept anything less than our divine birthright. So that's one of the key things. I think part of that business platform, obviously we're growing a business, growing a team and all that kind of good stuff. Just want to impact people more. Uh, I think those are some of the intangibles that they gather part of this, this environment that we're developing for you to raise your level of self-image. Um, and then two, you know, for you to be able to tap into some type of entrepreneurship vein, you know, we've chosen, you know, Primerica as a platform, the financial service industry as that platform. And then thirdly, man, there's the opportunity as we continue to grow where a person can actually own and claim stake on their own piece of, of the, the world of, you know, having their own office and being able to, you know, tap into those things. So, uh, those are some of the things I would say directly, uh, Gerald, when it comes to that, you know, we're in the throes of, developing a podcast and there's some other you know great things that's about to sort of be manifested you know from this as well to be able to impact more people man because we you know we feel that uh you know the father has blessed us and has given us some things to be able to say and a perspective about some things most importantly to help people to become the best versions of themselves got you man and i love it i love it so Hey, I'm uh, extremely grateful, and I definitely look forward to. I'm I'm grateful to be a part of the the nation, and as well as being able to bring you on here and you absolutely gems, man. <laughs> like seriously, man, man, like I'm telling you, this is going to be an amazing episode. People 
are going to be able to keep coming back here. And uh, hopefully, you know, you continue to come back because. Absolutely, man. I love it, man. Part, I man. Love it. You're dropping is amazing, man. Amazing. And I know this is just this is barely even like really like a, a, a little piece of a gym. For real. <laughs> like it's a big bag, bigger bag full of gym. <laughs> you got really four people, man. And so one thing I definitely want you to do is leave us with one last gym. Uh, that we ask of you. And of course, as always, man, I'm super grateful for, to having you on and thank you for your time, man. Thank Absolutely, you. man. Right back at you, brother. You know, the gratitude is mutual. You know, I'm grateful for you and, you know, who you are and what you represent, your family and, you know, the husband and things that you're doing, man. I'm, I'm grateful that you even thought about me, man. You know, so we're grateful for that. But, um, you know, if there's anything I would probably maybe conclude with, you know, we was talking a little bit about, you know, those three points, self-image, entrepreneurship, ownership. Um, we're actually in the midst of a study currently. Um, we do it every other Sunday. So not this Sunday, obviously it's tonight, Super Bowl, but next, uh, next Sunday. So every other Sunday, we're actually in the midst of a study on, uh, the, it's called the magic power of self image. And so there's a gentleman named Maxwell Maltz who authored a book called psycho cybernetics. And over the past, I would say maybe five, six, actually, I would say even my tenure in, in, in the business, that we, I've studied incessantly about the mind, about the subconscious mind, the conscious mind. And inside the subconscious mind, there is what's known as your self-image. It's everybody carries around them, with them, an actual image of the kind of person that they are or aren't. For example, somebody's late all the time. I'm always such and such. What, what is it that you say? I am always, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me, Right. That is a person self-image talking. Mm. And so that self-image has a lot to do with the things that we've seen as children, how people talk to us, the things that we answer to. All of those things are the self-image is a conglomeration of all those things. And so at the end of the day, we have to begin to change the way that we see ourselves so that we can achieve the level of success that is ours by divine right. Because if I see myself a certain way, if I see myself as inferior, like we said about Carter G. Wilson's in his book, then I'll never attain something. Even if it is mine, I'll find a way to self-sabotage myself. Mm. And so these are things that we have sought to work on, man, in, in, in this journey, in, in this process of beginning to change the way that we see ourselves, that you are a king, that there is a king in you, there is a queen in you. And once we tap into that, then we cannot act as a pauper. We can't act anything less than how we see ourselves. And so those are just things, man, that, you know, along this path, brother, that our desire, our hope, our heart is to help people to become the best version of themselves. Final quote, Alan Toffler has a very prolific quote. I'll conclude with this. It says, the 21st century illiterate is not the person that cannot read or write. But the 21st century is the person who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So think about that for a moment. There are some things that we've learned that were just absolutely farce. They were false because the people that around us, parents, uncles, cousins, aunts, aunts, and all those folks, didn't know the divine purpose that was on your life. And so they responded to you out of their own brokenness and you followed a script from someone that didn't even know who you authentically were. So you learned some stuff that you need to unlearn because that's not who you are. Mm. And then there are some things that I must now relearn. I must now relearn boundaries. I must now relearn conflict resolution, discipline, self-discipline. I must relearn these things so that I can become the best version of myself. Because at the end of the day, we are a problem to it. We are a solution to a problem in the earth. When God created you, he created me and whoever else is going to be here in this program. He had a purpose for your life in mind that you are an answer to a problem. And if I follow an old script that I've outgrown, then I can't tap into my divine purpose, man. And so, brother, that's where we are, man. That's where we are. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, that was when I said leave him off with a gym, man. You left him off with the full cold blown. <laughs> so, all right, I, I I love it, man. I love it, man. Those who cannot learn, but then unlearn and then yes, learn, like and then relearn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
That's it. That's what that's what we're in the state of doing, man. That's what we are exactly in the state of doing. And that's they it, man. definitely learn from you and you can definitely continue to teach and show them the right right things to learn and the things that they need to relearn and adapt to be able to succeed in this world, man. So, hey, we appreciate you uh, bringing this Pleasure, man. platform here, man. And it's it's truly an honor. I'm grateful. And, man, hey, as always, y'all, appreciate today, man. Appreciate today. Hey, I'm grateful. Thank you. Same Thank you, brother. Thanks, man. Now let the beat.